Howdy folks and welcome back to War Thunder with the Mighty Jingles. Uh, the second War Thunder video I've put up, uh, I was very, very surprised. Well, I'm surprised it probably isn't the right word. I was expecting my audience to, uh, to, to, to like what they saw of War Thunder, um, but I wasn't expecting so many of you to like it quite so much. <laughs> Uh, which, you know, is a testament to how good the game actually is. Or perhaps it's a testament to how good I made it look. <laughs> we shall see what happens. Uh, see how many of you are still playing after you've had a go. Uh, but I did promise that I would do a second video. Uh, I'll do a third and a fourth and a fifth and so on and so on. Just to expand on what I showed you in the first one. Uh, and, and show you in greater detail some of the other options. So what we're going to do today is look at the different control systems and the different game modes. So, we're going to start off with the controls, and here you go. Now, all you've seen me do so far, people keep asking this in the questions, is um, mouse and keyboard. That, that's all I've used so far, because I do not have a joystick. I've ordered a Thrustmaster uh, joystick and throttle combo. It's going to take anything up to a week to two weeks for, to be delivered. I ordered it four days ago, so I cannot show you anything that requires the use of a joystick yet, because I don't have one. Bear that in mind as we go through this. So, mouse aim does not support joysticks. You control the aircraft using only the mouse. And in the first video that you saw, and in everything you're going to see in this video, I'm just using mouse control. Right, it's a very simplified arcade flight sim uh, model when you're using this control system. Uh, but it's not the only control system in the game. And if you're prepared to learn the more complicated controls, it unlocks whole parts of the game that you just can't play using mouse aim. Um, but, you know, if all you want to do is your World of Tanks style random battles and just keep playing arcade battles, uh, by all means, you know, you can absolutely do that. It is a lot of fun. However, the next step up is simplified controls. So there is still a virtual instructor who, who does the trim and the uh, throttle control and adjusts the pitch of your propellers for you and all that sort of thing. It's just done for you. You don't need to worry about it. But simplified controls allows you to start remapping buttons to programmable joysticks and taking over more of the control of the aircraft from the AI. Um, now, mouse control will still work in simplified controls, but it works differently to mouse aim. And the very first time I tried to do something that required simplified controls, I had no idea how to control the aircraft, and I just crashed. So it will work with mouse and keyboard in simplified controls, but it's not what you're used to using mouse aim in the arcade battles. Uh, I would recommend that you start using a joystick um, with simplified controls. You can control it with a mouse, but it's difficult until you get used to it. Realistic controls, joystick required. All right, realistic controls gives you more control over the various systems of the aircraft. The next step up, of course, full aircraft controls. And you control absolutely bloody everything. Now, all you propellers out there, oh, they're propellers, all you propeller heads out there who uh, like the look of War Thunder but were disappointed by the simplified flight model, well, this is what you're going to be interested in. Now, I can't show you this because I don't have a, key, uh, a, a joystick, but I can show you the range of options available just to give you some sort of idea of what you're getting into. So you've got the same basic control settings as in Mouse Aim, but then there's a whole lot more. Full aerodynamics, the trim for the elevator, the aerolons, and the rudder, left and right brakes, then engine control, uh, the fuel mixture, the pitch of the propellers, uh, the radiator, the supercharger, different positions on the magneto. Uh, just, you know, wow. Um, hopefully, you know, you guys who thought, yeah, this it looks too childish and simplistic for me, might start paying a bit more interest when you see the range of, you know, aircraft controls that were actually available in this thing. Um, so, you know, there you go. But for me, switch back to mouse aim because I don't have a joystick yet. Uh, what else do we have on this menu? There's a little encyclopedia there which is it, it's pretty basic uh, although there is some information here on crew training but I'm going to cover that separately. Some information on the store and then various other you know stuff game modes, controls, tactics, stunts and a little, little not even worthy of the history channels simplistic view of history little annotations here about the various different battles in the game so bingo next up we got leaderboards um, want to know how you're doing compared to the top players in the game well with my 50 um what's this one with my 50 victories so far this month i'm lagging quite far behind uh, the top place with 1200 victories this month this, these guys must do nothing but 
play War Thunder. In fact, there's probably whole teams of people <laughs> playing in shifts to get that many games played in a month. And that's the leaderboards for historical battles, arcade battles, and full real battles. So that's all up there as well. Uh, replays, there is a replay system implemented. Um, it's not as simple to control the replays as uh, the replays in World of Tanks are. And the replays in World of Tanks are still an experimental feature. I have to admit, Wargame and have done very, very, very good work on the replay system in their game. But I'm going to have a play around with this and see what sort of stuff I can bring you. There's a little benchmark there, see what sort of frame rate you're getting in your game. But you, you probably notice this at the top of the screen here is giving them a frame rate anyway. Uh, credits and exit. Great. So, game modes. Here's where it's at. Now, all you've seen me do so far is basically that. To battle. Playing arcade games. Uh, and that's fine. That's great. And it's a lot of fun. But, and I'm not going to be able to show you this because I don't have a joystick. But here we go. Custom battles. Now, you, various different people are hosting custom battles at the moment. And you can jump into any of those games and take part. Or you can create your own session. And here are the different operations involved. So you have operations, ground strikes, domination maps, and duels. Uh, these all require, if I go to select, difficulty level. Simplified, realistic, simulator, or custom. All right. No mouse aim. So, and once again, you can control the aircraft with the mouse in simplified, but it's difficult. Or it was for me, because I'm old and I don't respond to change very well. I recommend using a joystick. So th this is the sort of part of the game that I'm not going to be able to show you until my joystick arrives. So apologies for that, but if you have your own joystick and you've downloaded the game, by all means jump in and explore this custom battle system. Let me know what it's like. So I can't show you that right now, but I can at least show you that it's available. Next we have the tutorial, which you've probably all completed by now anyway, and missions. So, and again, same interface. Uh, and here are the missions that are currently being run by various different players. And again, you can jump into any one of those and take part. Uh, cooperative or uh, flying against them. Or you can create your own. And here are your different choices. The bottom here, dynamic campaign, single missions, and mission editor. Now, the dynamic campaign, again, it's one of those things. Here's the attack on Pearl Harbor. If I select and go for difficulty level, again, no mouse aim available. You have to basically use a joystick in order to be able to enjoy this part of the game. So once again, can't show you that. More to come in future videos. Single missions, however, do support mouse aim. And these are a lot of fun. Now, this is interesting, actually, the way this is set up. Because you cannot... I mean, you can see here, the Battle of the Ruhr, I, I cannot launch these missions, missions yet. Destroyer can't launch those missions yet. The Sicilian Operation cannot do. Well, this one I can't. Uh, second Approach, Operation Husky. Battle of the Bulge, I have two missions unlocked, Meek and Mild, which is uh, uh, fly along the route of the river in a P-39. Okay. Guardian Angel, four P-51D Mustangs, protect the convoy in its mission. But the Siege of Bastogne, prevent relief supplies from reaching the surrounded American 101st Airborne Division, I cannot do. That's because you unlock these single missions by flying... Well, so far, I've unlocked all of those by flying um, arcade battles. So that's an interesting system. What else do we have? Uh, single missions. And then there's a mission editor. And I haven't messed around with this at all yet. Um, but that looks like being a lot of fun to mess around with. And, I, and again, I'll have to have a go at that and, and let you know how it works. But just letting you know that it is there and something that you can pick around with. What else do we have in the game modes? Oh, here we go, historical campaigns. Uh, and these are... Not all of these are going to be available. Um, you, so these are things that you have actually mostly have to buy. Uh, there's various different campaign packs which you can buy in the store. Uh, and buying a campaign pack usually comes with a, with a premium aircraft as well. Um, so you've got two different campaigns available in the game at the moment. The Pacific War uh, from the American and the Japanese perspectives. And you can see which ones I've done. The attack on Pearl Harbor. This one's actually bloody difficult. This is single player. It's you uh, against the AI. This is purely offline. Um, you, you know, there's, there's no other players involved in this. Uh, the Japanese one seems to be... Well, for me, it was a lot easier. As you can see, I'm up to the Battle of Midway in the Japanese one. And the thing is, you earn XP and credits by doing these missions. Um, 
So if you're struggling, uh, and it can be a little struggle in you, when you first start playing the game and you've got these really crappy reserve aircraft that aren't really much good for anything, it can be a bit of a struggle to get out of tier 0 and at tier 1 and 2. One of the ways of doing that is to jump into your game modes here and go for your historical campaign and start earning XP and credits by just flying these missions. Uh, and they're not a bad little, little introduction into how the game works. Um, but you can, of course, just hit the battle button and jump straight in. So, what next? Well, uh, before we jump into a few games, let's have a look at one of the tech trees. Um, five different tech trees to choose from. American, German, Russian, British or Japanese. We're going to look at the German tech tree first. So, here it is. Now, the German tech tree is uh, interesting in that it's not just the German tech tree. It's also the Italian tech tree. And you're going to be flying a lot of these Italian planes, whether you want to or not. Because, it, well, it's basically designed that way. There are gaps in the German tech tree that you have to fill with some of the Italians earlier on as you're climbing up the tiers. Now, first point to note is that, there you go, there's my player level. I'm a level 9 player, but my rank in each country's air force is what determines which of those aircraft I can actually select for that country's team. So I'm rank 7 in USA, Germany, USSR, rank 9 in Britain, and rank 6 in Japan. So even though I'm a rank 9 player, I can only choose up to level 7 aircraft in the German Air Force because I'm only a level 7, if you look down here, there's my German Air Force rank, level 7 German Air Force player. So what aircraft do the Germans get? Well they're split into different lines here and basically what you have here is the all the Italian aircraft, you've got all the pure fighter aircraft here, the BF 109s, uh, the Comet, the ME 262. Over here you've got the very, very good fighter aircraft, the Fokker Wolf 190s and different variations of those. Plus yet another jet here, uh, check that one out, the HE-162. Uh, you start getting these guys at very, very high tiers, tier 11, tier 12, 14, 16 and 18. Here we have, uh, the Germans have two different lines of ground attack aircraft, which is interesting. I don't think any other nations do that. Unfortunately, this one here at tier 4 starts off with one of the, well, one of, no, this is the M3 Lee <laughs> of uh, War Thunder. This, the BF-110 is an absolute turd of an aircraft. I could not wait to get rid of it, even if that meant I was getting rid of it for a Stuka. And the Stukas aren't that good either. But this thing is just, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I, I will let you find out yourself by flying one. It is just appallingly bad. But you don't have to fly it for very long because it's only tier 4. However, the next step up... Oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, the next step up, step up in this line doesn't happen until tier 8. So you'll be scrabbling to get your hands on the JU-87Ds very, very quickly. So you can uh, stick one of those in the crew slot that's currently been wasted with your BF-110. It is an absolute pig of a plane to fly. Um, speaking of what you get next, Tier 8 is where you get the next one in this ground attack line. And these are all ME-410s, various different var uh, variations of the ME-410. You've got two at Tier 8, nope, three at Tier 8, two at Tier 9, nope, three at Tier 9 as well, uh, and one at Tier 10. Uh, and these are all, you know, competent ground attack aircraft. They're kind of like the German version of the Sturmovik. Which moves us on to this line here, which is all the JU-87s, with a little surprise at the end for you. Um, the first two, you'll see you've got two at tier 3, two at tier 5, and two at tier 7. So every two tiers you get a new Stuka dive bomber. And they are good dive bombers. Um, don't expect miracles of the ones at tier 3, because they're only tier 3. Their, armed, their armament is pretty poor. They have a pair of 12.7, uh, or is it 7.7mm machine guns? No, 7.92mm 7 machine guns. They do have a rear gunner. Uh, that's something that the first model of the Sturmovik is missing. But uh, they do have a rear gunner, and I would recommend you make sure that that rear gunner is bloody good, because when you're flying these things, you're going to have people sitting on your ass, filling it full of lead a lot of the time. They are horribly unmaneuverable. They're pretty damn slow. Even coming out of a dive, they bleed off speed really, really quickly, and they have a very limited bomb load. But they're only Tier 3, so, you know, what can you expect? You move up to the JU-87D, the D3 and the D5 at Tier 5, and they start getting good, because instead of those weedy little machine guns, they get a pair of 20mm cannons mounted in the wings, uh, which gives them a bit of an extra punch when you're waiting for your bombs to reload and you can still shoot up ground targets. That gets even better to a degree 
at tier 7 with the JU87G, and here's one in my hangar. It doesn't carry any bombs at all. It, it, it doesn't have the engine to carry bombs because it's got two dirty great big 37mm anti-tank guns. And these are actually anti-aircraft guns uh, mounted under the wings. 37mm from the Flak Panzers, I think. Um, and it has a very, very limited ammo load. I think you get to fire about 12 shots and then... And it, and it doesn't fire like a machine gun. It's literally it's bang, 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 bang. It's as slow as that. And they're proper cannons. Uh, this thing was basically there for... It was a stopgap measure to take out Russian tanks on the Eastern Front. Um, you know, they looked at the Sturmovik and they thought, wow, that's quite good. Can we have one of those, please? Uh, yeah, we'll stick these guns on the Stuka. Uh, and, and that's basically what this thing was. Too much weight. They, they had to re remove most of the armour from this thing. You'll notice the radiator cowling. Uh, all the armour on the radiator cowling is gone. No, no space to fit bombs on there, just no spare engine capacity. Um, but it does dive much better than the others. Uh, and these things are good for taking out most things except heavy bunkers and heavy tanks. Just about anything else um, these things can do damage to. So, a nice little aircraft. And of course, after the JU-87s, you end up with this thing. Um, I've never even heard of it. HS-129B2. I have no idea what it is. It, it's basically, it looks and seems to play like a German version of the Sturmovik. So, you know, much like these things do. So, there you go. And then finally, we come on to, well, not finally, we've still got the premiums. But then we come on to the bombers, uh, the proper bombers. Uh, you know, these are not fighter bombers, they're just bombers. You start off with the Heinkel, HE-111. Um, it's it's only rack four. It's not bad. Its bomb load is a bit weedy, but it's very, very well protected. If you have a look, uh, it has five gun turrets. So, you're coming at this thing from any angle, you're going to get shot at. But the bomb load, you've got a bunch of, and a lot, this is a very, very large bomb load at this tier, 32 50 kilo bombs, and that's like dropping hand grenades on people. With an upgrade, install this thing. Um, oh, I've got a different bomb rack installed. It allows you to mount 250 kilo bombs, which does give you more punch, but you can only have eight of them. So that's the HE111H3. After that, you get the Junkers JU88A4, and this isn't bad either. I'm flying one of these at the moment, and it's it's kind of fast. It does 467 kilometers per hour. Um, it's it's not bad. The the weapon load is again kind of limited. You've got your four 250 kilo bombs, or your standard 32 50 kilo bombs, or uh, 32 of those and four 250 kilo bombs. I don't know why <laughs> they split it up like that. Uh, you know, you got you can have those, or you can have those. Or okay, you can have both. <laughs> but there you go. It is what it is. Hey, it's beta. What can I say? I'm sure there's an intelligent reason for it. I just can't figure it out right now. Then at tier 8, again, a bit of a gap. So you're going to be flying your dive bombers and possibly some of your Italian bombers here between tier 5 and 6 and 7 before you get to the HE-111-H6. So it's the same as the HE-111 over here at tier 4, but it's at tier 8. And finally, you can actually start loading a decent bomb load on this thing. You start getting some really big bombs. Now, you need to unlock these pylons by accumulating experience on the aircraft, but you can mount 1,000 kilo bombs, <laughs> which is nice. And, and those crack bunkers and sink destroyers like you wouldn't believe. Uh, at tier 10, there's another HE-111-H16. Um, it's just a, a, an upgraded variant of this thing. Uh, but then the only jet bomber in the game, there it is. Let's have a look at it in the garage the hangar. There you go, the Arado 234. The Germans get a jet bomber. I have never seen one of these. I can't wait to fly one myself. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. What sort of bomb load does it get? Three 500 kilo bombs, that's it. No variations. It is what it is. 500 kilo bombs aren't bad, and it does get three of them. So, all three of those on a carrier, yeah, that's going to cause some damage. And then finally, in every tech tree you're going to see, the last column is premium aircraft and gift aircraft. Now, I have a gift, Fokker Wolf 190 D13, because I bought the Ultra Starter Kit for this game, because I'm crazy. Um, and it's a great aircraft, but it's rank 14, so I have to be careful <laughs> putting it into the team, because the team that you select for the mission that you're going to play next gets, made, uh, gets match made, based on the highest level. It's just like a platoon in World of Tanks. If I if I was to slot that thing in a team with these guys, I would get matchmaking based on 
that rank 14 Focke Wolf 190. Uh, which would be great when I was flying the Focke Wolf 190, but once that got shot down and I had to jump into something half the level <laughs> of the Focke Wolf 190, things would get slightly difficult. So I can't really play that yet. Uh, I had a few games with it. Um, actually, no, I haven't played a single game in this yet. Uh, and I didn't do it until I level up these guys to a, a, a reasonable level where it makes it competitive playing it with that. So that's the German Air Force for you and the Italian Air Force. I'll uh, expand on that because I've talked far too much for now in a future video and show you uh, the other tech trees. So let's put the Germans uh, through their paces. Oh dear, this is a bit of a blow to morale. You see, my German team is very heavily ground attack aircraft orientated. And this is a domination map. There are three airfields. And the team that controls the most airfields wins. The team that shoots down the most enemy aircraft wins too. But this is very much a fighter friendly uh, game map and mode. So, and I have lots of bombers and ground attack aircraft. Because that's pretty much what the German tech tree gets. And that, that's, that's probably my one major gripe with the German tech tree. At medium levels, there's not a lot of fighter aircraft to choose from. Well, it depends how big a team you're taking in, of course. If you've spent, you know, credits to expand your uh, your team list, then you have to stock it up with, you know, whatever's there. And unfortunately, that just means lots of JU-87 Stukas and JU-88 Bombers, um, which is great if you're on a ground strike mission or, you know, a standard battle. But if you're in a domination mission like this, it's not good news. So I'll probably just play my fighters, and then when they get shot down, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a, it's a waste of time, putting a bomber into this mission. There are ground targets for you to shoot at, but you, they don't really affect, um, the outcome. Unfortunately, they're just there for you to score extra points, and to give the, the bombers something to do. So here we go, uh, the BF one and nine F four. Well, I've really only got two fighters in this one. Now, in order to capture and hold an airfield, you have to land on it. Let's just have a look at the competition here. Well, that's not too bad. There's a couple of tier 8s there. Um, I've played games so far tonight where we've had ME163 Comets on the other team. I think, how the hell did I get into this match? The matchmaking is... When there's not that many people on, the matchmaking can get a bit suspect. So, capture an airfield by landing on it, and uh, yes, I know I'm coming in far too fast and far too steep, and all I would do here is bury my propeller, snap my landing gear, but it's arcade mode, it's much more forgiving, and I'm still coming in far too fast, 300, and yes, did it, zone captured, hoorah! Get my gear up, get my flaps up. And here they come. Oh, when I'm at low speed here. You're very vulnerable when you've uh, just captured an airfield. Spitfire coming in. No idea what variation he is. Could be a Mark 9. Probably not going to be a Mark 16. Hopefully he's a Mark 2 or a 5C. And he seems to have tunnel vision. Ah, oh, missed it. He's going after that Corsair. Good luck catching. Oh, good shot. Air Cobra just swatted him out of the sky there. Quick look around. Check the radar. Nothing behind me. But I'm not going to be the first one to dive into that swarm of enemy aircraft. Uh, but as you can see, they're going for the ground targets. Oh, fine. We don't win by killing the ground targets. Now, there's Airfield B, and nobody really seems to be going for it. But I don't want to go rushing over there. There's too many aircraft flying around it and they're all red. Here comes a hurricane. Probably a Mark III. I don't want to fly into it. Ooh, hit him. Is he going to crash? Ah, oh, crap, my engine's been hit. I'm never going to make it out of here alive. Watch me start losing power. Engine's hit, airframe's hit. Well, this guy's not dead. Fix that. He's trying to land. 
Yeah, set him on fire. He's gone. And soon me too. Yeah, all sorts of bad guys on my tail. There's three of them back there. Oh well, never mind. Jump into the E3. And I'm going to have to start using the the Stukas. Oh no. Although, you know, your bomber crews can, can be surprisingly effective. If you take the bomber down to medium altitude and make them come up to you, you can rip them apart with your uh, defensive gunners. If your gun crews are any good. G4M1, what the hell's that? It's Japanese, I think. I think it's a bomber. He's six kilometres away, but he's closing fast. Looks like they're trying to go for our airstrip. Oh, look, we're getting our arse completely kicked here. They've taken two of the airstrips. And our team are quitting the game left, right and centre. G4M1. Ooh, it's closing very, very quickly. I really hope that's not a zero. No, it's not a zero. The zero is the M uh, AM6. He is a bomber. Oh, he was a bomber. Oh, Hellcat. Yeah, I want Hellcat's got a lot of machine guns. As you can see, this crew isn't particularly well trained. I'm starting to suffer from... Uh, I should be able to outturn a Hellcat. Yep, you like that, don't you, bitch? Oh, he's on fire. And that was probably wrecked his control surfaces. He should be easy to kill now. Unless he outruns me. Come on, maximum throttle. No, he's going to get away. Dive. Try and catch up with him. Cannon's reloaded. I might, might, might be able to finish him off. Oh, I'm hitting him, I'm hitting him. Come on. Got him. Right, let's not push my luck. Although, well, we're getting our ass kicked. Oh, we've managed to capture, or, or at least uncapture their airfield C. But somebody's paid for it with their lives and they're about to recapture it. And I don't like these odds. Oof, that was close. They keep trying to ram you, these little kids. They know, they know they're coming up against another aircraft that is 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 far superior to theirs and they just they just try to ram you. I'm not falling for that one twice. Lovely kill assist. Crap, there's lag three closing in. Open up the throttle, put some distance. Have a look behind us. That's more like it. I always find it's better to let them shoot at your friends <laughs> rather than you. Oh, BF 110. Oh, oh no. Let's get that Aero Cobra. Let's get that Derek over. Great cannons reloading. Count the machines. What are these guys doing? Ooh, he flew into that fella. Oh, that guy nearly flew into me. Thank you. Crappy teammates. Took him out. Air wind streak, three in a row. Oh, somebody on my ass. Final blow and there we go, game over, and I got the final kill. And I got the fighter award for killing the most air targets. So that wasn't too bad considering I only anticipated being able to play two fighters. I'm pretty sure we got our ass kicked. Um but yeah, i d I'm I'm quite happy with that result. Let's see. Random battles. Yeah, <laughs> best player on the team. Oh, it's just like playing World of Tanks. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at that. Crap. Yeah, we ran out of tickets. They controlled two zones and just depleted our score. So, yeah, we lost, but I did shoot down... Oh, check this out. Yeah, did shoot down four aircraft. Didn't bother going for any ground targets. Uh, destroyed the most air targets. Got the final blow in the game, uh, which is always nice. And 13,000 XP. Well, that's not great, but we did lose. So, uh, there you go. Mission failed. <laughs> Hooray for failed missions. <laughs> Gonna have to have another go. Well, wouldn't you believe it? The very next game I get into, it's exactly the same. <laughs>
Let's jump into the old uh, BF109 again. Try to do some good. And it looks like we've started on pretty much the same side. Okay, let's see if I can get some quick and easy points for capturing the airfield at the start again. All you have to do is land on it. Well, you don't even have to land. You don't have to stop moving. You just have to be on the runway for a certain number of time and you capture the airfield. Or you force the airfield to be uncaptured if the other team occupy it. As you can see, right at the top, both teams have the same number of tickets. Drop my gear. If I was playing this in, arc in realistic mode, I would be um, crashing around about now. Uh, ripping my undercarriage off with the drag. But it's arcade mode and I can get away with this. Oh, crap, we're going to get strafed on the runway by that Yak-1. I can see it coming. He's closing in far too fast. Right, screw that. Gear up, flaps up. Full throttle. Let's take this guy out and let the buffalo capture the airfield. There we go. Got him. First strike. 500 bonus XP. Tuple of TU2. Right, OK. Let's go for the guys at the rear. I don't chase after the guy in front and have all these seven fighters coming after me. SU-2, ground attack aircraft, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, he's been shot down. Cool. Brewster Buffalo got him. How embarrassing. Lag three. Okay, they're fairly dangerous. Oh, hit him a few times. I want to be careful, don't want to fly into him. Oh, gain some altitude far too low. And somebody else shot down, I got the assist. Okay, so no no kill streak. That buffalo's doing alright. Crappy little Brewster Buffalo. In case anybody's wondering, the clouds do work as cover. Right, get that stern with it. Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to get that Yak-7. Somebody else has already shot the Sturmovic down. Hurrah. Oh wow, this is like a complete reversal of the last game. Uh, we control two airstrips here. That's good news. Cannons out, down machine guns, reloading the cannons. I was playing full realism, I would have to actually land to reload. Oh, be careful here. I tried to drop my throttle to not overshoot him and it didn't work. <laughs> Where's he gone? Never mind him. Yeah, fire rescuer. Defender the friendly fighter. <laughs> They just throw XP at you for all sorts of things in this game. It's really good. Ah, damn it. Yeah, I hung around on that Sturmovic's tail for far too long. But I'm pretty sure I did enough damage to force him down. Let's jump into the uh, 109E3 and see if we can continue our good work. Oh crap, now they hold two airstrips. <laughs> I should probably do something about that, but I'm having too much fun killing stuff. Actually, if it's safe, I might go for airfield B and try and reset. Uh, it's not safe. I get shot down on the runway. It looks like those guys are going for our airfield. All right, I'm gonna have to do something about that. Well, we're doing all right here. Personally, <laughs> the team isn't. Yeah, that hurricane. There's two of them there, and there's a Yak-9 T heading over there as well. And we only have one aircraft defending, and he's in a P-2. That's a bomber. <laughs> okay, um, let's go and defend the airstrip. And he's been shot down, so now there's... Oh, shit. Four of them against me? Ah, uh, this is going to hurt. Five, six, seven of them? Oh, holy crap. Yep, he's going for it. I've got to intercept him. And at that altitude, that's going to... 
probably cause him some problems. Yeah, there you go, he's down. Get, up. Get the hell out of there, that guy will try to ram me if he can. It's happened far too many times. And he has friends. A uh, friend who put some bullets into the hurricane, he was so desperate to shoot me down. <laughs> yeah, you get that a lot in this game. Friendly fire all over the place. Let's take the... JU-87 has three turrets. Yeah, screw it. Let's take the JU-87. Oh, look, check out the score. Um, the bar at the top. We've taken back the airfield B. <laughs> this game's just going both ways all the time. Any, anybody could win this. This has been a really, really good game. Uh, I wouldn't mind losing this one so much. Teams have played well. Lucian 4 down there. Some of these bombers uh, actually have their own armament. Uh, a lot of the Russian ones do, and the Italian ones do too. Uh, as in, you know, weapons that you can control from this view, forward firing machine guns. Because uh, the Russians are mostly, uh, they're not really bombers. That, that thing down there, the uh, the IL 4, the Aleutian 4, that, that's a bomber. Oh, and he's trying to capture B. If I get close enough, I can drop some bombs on him. <laughs> that really ruin his day. Yeah, he's been forced off. Um, the, the German ones don't have pilot-controlled weapons, other than, you know, the bombs. Speaking of which, let's... Oh, there's a Catalina up there. Sneaky little bugger. He's just cruising around. He can hide in the clouds, by the way, just in case you were wondering about that. It's in, entirely doable, and it's a, it's a valid tactic. I've been in games where the objective was to destroy all the ground targets, and the ground targets that were left were just undestroyable by the... You know, you needed something that carried a bomb to knock out a battleship, for example. And it was just a question of who was going to run out of uh, aircraft first. And the aircraft on the enemy team was a bomber, and we could not find it. So I'm getting shot at, I'm not going to get to drop this bomb. Oh, whoever's shooting at me is coming to regret it. Check out my gunner. Oh crap, my airframe's full of holes. Look at that. You're not supposed to be able to see the sky through the tail plane and the wings. <laughs> I'm never getting out of this one alive. Come on, gunners. Finish him off. Nah. Oh, I did. That bomb did hit the target. Let's release my. There we go. Am I going to run out of bombs? I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a waste of time. There's not a lot of point in taking the. Yeah, screw it. I'll take I'll take the JU87 in. No, I won't. I'll take the JU87 the JU87G in just to show you these 37 mm cannons. Uh, one hit from this thing can wreck an enemy plane. Oh, that appears to be it. Did we win? Let's see. Looks like the game ended while I was in the menu screen. It's entirely possible we won. We did control two airfields for a large section of that game. Uh, yeah, bingo. We still had 660 tickets left. While only controlling one zone, they must have wrested control of airfield B back right at the last moment, but too late. Oh, shame. I wish I'd seen that. That was a really, really well-played game on both teams. Um, oh, brilliant. Challenge unlocked. Uh, BF Ace. There are an extra thousand credits and a thousand XP. Uh, that wasn't a particularly good game. Uh, as far as XP and credits goes, it wasn't that good at all. Um, but but it was a good match, you know, it was two good teams playing against each other, so, yeah, can't really complain. So where does that leave us? Let's have a look uh, at my aircraft and see whether or not I have... There we go, bingo! I've just earned 35,000 XP on the BF109F4, which allows me to unlock new wing pylons, and they cost nothing, 2,500 credits. You earn 10, 15, 20 times that uh, playing a game, and that allows me to mount... Uh, a couple of bombs so that it just makes the, the aircraft more versatile if I'm in a mission where we need bombs to knock out ground targets because a 20 mil cannon isn't going to do the job you, you can go for it although 50 kilo bombs are a bit crap really I'm going to need these pylons which allows me to install one 250 kilo bomb um, you, you see this a lot in the American fighter tree because most of their fighters are, are armed with just lots of machine guns and you can't knock out tanks with machine guns so a lot of their planes are able to uh, do, uh, play the fighter bomber role, uh, mount a bomb uh, and use that 
you know, as necessary. What about the E3? Did I earn any experience on that? For, no, I already had the pylon on the E3. Uh, 44,000 XP earned, and for that one I need 54,000. So yeah, another game or two, and that should be unlocked. And I didn't really get any airtime in these. Uh, not even in the previous game, so not worth looking at. So anyway, there you go. Well, uh, no, World of Warplanes? Oh, wash my mouth out with soap. Slap yourself, Jingles, you bad boy. Uh, War Thunder, uh, the German tech tree, and uh, some of the game modes. Um, I'll be back with another video, having a look at another tech tree and showing you some battles in some other aircraft. Hopefully we'll get a few different maps. Um, there are actually a wide range, but for some reason the matchmaker uh, it, it gets its teeth in a one map and it doesn't want to let go. I've had sessions quite regularly where it's been the same map over and over and over for three or four games in a row. But, you know, it's beta. There are bugs to be worked out. There's some massive bugs to be worked out, actually. I'm going to talk about some of the bugs in the next one. Uh, you guys have been and downloaded the game since you saw my first video. We'll probably have encountered some of them, especially if you've tried to play with friends. That's a real pain in the arse at the moment, but more on that in the next video. As always, take care on the battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.